welcome to some more Alpha 18, 7 Days to Die. So Rick and Joel, as you can see on the screen, were recently having, a, I believe it's a Twitch stream interview that they were doing, I guess discussing and answering some questions regarding the upcoming Alpha 18 version of 7 Days to Die. And I thought that would be a perfect example and perfect time to uh, just watch it and walk through and give my commentary on some of the discussions they're having. Now, this is a really long interview that had almost one hour. So I definitely, I'm not gonna spend uh, you know, hours and hours to give this to you. I'm gonna cut it down and just uh, provide some of the highlights that I think are worthwhile to discuss or comment on. It was uh, fairly interesting to hear Rick uh, do the main theme of the game. I didn't know he played the electric guitar. Maybe you should do that as part of uh, one of the versions in game. That would be pretty cool. But you can see them, Rick and Joel, which are the co-founders of the Fun Pimps. And of course, as always, I would love to hear your commentary. You know, what do you think? You know, are, what are they discussing? Is it a, the positive and constructive way that they're taking the game? Should they be making some tweaks, some changes? What do you think? I mean, as a community, we have to be vocal and provide our feedback, of course, positively so, constructively, and let them know where do we think they should be going. Of course, they will not going to be listening or following to all we say, but at least by providing the feedback, we give them the maximum opportunity to take it in a direction that we think is more productive. And uh, as always, you know, they, they're doing the development the way they think it should be, but hopefully they listen to the community as well. And hopefully you like and subscribe to my channel as well and come back and listen to more of the commentary. So we decided that we we're gonna do a uh, quick TFP stream to kind of give some details on Alpha 18. I'm here with Rick and Joel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let them do probably most of the talking. So go ahead and take it away, guys. Hey, guys, we uh, we all met up in Allen, Texas here at our, at our Dallas studio. Um, we're starting to meet up every quarter, and uh, we thought it would be fun to do this on a Friday. Uh, we want to talk about Alpha 18. And uh, so, Joel, hey, what, what are, you, are you doing? How are you one quick feedback that I think uh, a lot of people are saying as well is that they probably should have chosen a bit of a better location for doing a Q&A, you know, bring in some couches, you know, a little bit of sound dampening because you're just hearing a lot of echoes in there, better microphone, sit down, chill, you know, have a have a beer or have a coffee and a bit more relaxed. This looks a little bit, uh, um, I'm not going to say unprofessional, but it doesn't look extremely professional or relaxed either, just sitting down on some basic chairs, you know. Bring it into a couch, you know, bring the community in a sort of a bit more in a comfortable, warm setting. I, that, that's what I would suggest that they do for the next time, at least. Anyway, yeah, guys, um, totally excited about Alpha 18. I guess personally, I'm excited about the perk system, um, the overall balance we've achieved, and over 250 books and schematics we've added. Um, and I would say the uh, weapons have quality does damage now. Wait, did you say 250 books? Over 250 books or schematics. Holy shit. So there's a ton of things to collect. And the interesting point on the books is there are volumes of seven. And when you read all seven books, it unlocks a special unique perk. So they're, they're pretty cool and, and a lot of fun to collect. This is something that we're still waiting to see them expand on. Uh, you might recall that uh, Joel made a video about the perks, the different attributes, and sort of what are the sub skills in there and the, the attribute trees. And there was also this uh, icon on the rightmost side, uh, which had, looked like a book. And I think this is where it talks about, and he has talked about this on the forums as well, where you're having all these different books that give different bonuses. They might be small, but sort of they compound on the use of, I think, like having a pistol, there might be seven books that you can read, and they all give individual, uh, maybe maybe reloading, uh, maybe a better headshot, maybe you know whatever it could be. New splat maps, which render the textures, uh, they blend textures in a better way, so the game looks amazing, and it's going to run better. Uh, we have guys working on occlusion, we have uh, some optimizations to levels, and some uh, bullet optimizations, uh, some garbage collection that's coming in. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of great uh, tech level stuff on top of new POIs, uh, more quests, um, balanced. Yeah, no, brand new random gen tech. This is true. Brand, random gen yes. uh, is beautiful. It's, a, it's 
super exciting in that. Um, I think the optimization is something that is well overdue. You know, I know, I know a lot of people talk about that. You don't optimize until you're sort of ready with all the features and everything. And that's true. However, we have gotten progressively worse across the versions where you look back at Alpha 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, the game just ran better. Uh, the, the XP rebalance is, is really interesting too because we're making it so if you're a builder, you're a hunter, you're a crafter, you're a quester, we're doing our best uh, to balance the game so that no matter what playstyle you are, you're still going to earn XP and it's not really an advantage to one style over the other. Yeah, they're pretty equally balanced now. So I've already done a, a strength build and an agility build and it felt completely different, but they both had their own unique challenges and rewards. I think that's a really good thing that they are looking at the balance. It was Looking at Alpha 17, um, it was a party or co-op balance thing. If you were in a party, you shared the experience, the kill experience only, which meant that whoever was back doing the building or, or mining, etc., would get the shared experience from all the kills, and they would get all the experience from not really crafting that much, but from the building, crafting, mining, etc. So you could really boost the experience that, that way ahead of people doing a lot of killing if you're within the party range. Uh, you know, Unity is great for many things that it does, but in this case, it doesn't really deal with, it doesn't know how to not draw things that are off in the distance. And that's especially hard in a voxel game where you can destroy and punch a hole in a wall right. anywhere. And, it, and many people would say, well, why don't you just hide that stuff and turn it off? But we have the unique problem that in a voxel game, the user, the player can change the world at any time, break holes in anything, build things, so it's a very dynamic environment and traditional video games will analyze their levels and decide that everywhere, it'll look at every spot in the level and say, oh, this is what you can and cannot see here. And then they will bake in all that data and it's all processed and ready to go when you load that level and play it. And unfortunately for us, we have to do that all on the fly dynamically. So our inclusion system basically looks at the world and tries to determine what is hidden by other things. And then it tries to turn off large chunks of the world so they're not being rendered. And, it, and, and uh, fortunately at this point, it is up and running and mostly bug free and it works, but it's, it's got some good refinement left that needs to be done. Uh, but I have high hopes that it's, it's gonna work pretty well and uh, should help. I would gather it's gonna help more people with low end systems. If you have a high end system, the game's already running pretty well for you. Collusion. So it, uh, nice to hear uh, Fatal give an explanation of what it really is. And I think we all experience this if you're out in the wilderness on a good system. I, I, I might get 150, 160 frames per second. I go into the city, turn towards the city, even if I'm staring at just a blank wall, you know, I might be down at 40, 50 FPS uh, with nothing really happening. And that's on a good system. So I can really imagine people on a worse system having a lot less FPS when you're on cities. And the problem with that, of course, is that you try to avoid big cities too much because it's just heavy on your system. So having occlusion in, hopefully that will make a big difference. So you don't have to have these big dips in performance when you're near cities, near a lot of other structures. But again, we will see how much of an impact it is. Uh, so uh, there's a good number of them, yeah. <laughs> so why don't you tell us what you've been up to in Alpha 18? What have you been working on? A lot of optimizations to the POIs and uh, you know rebalancing and with the help of Sean's support giving us a couple new AI features, uh, we can actually improve the way that AI works inside of the POIs, uh, improve some of the setups, and you know make them make the AI more responsive and, and interesting. So the folks have been. Uh, we heard the feedback about Alpha 17. You guys thought we had the rebalance. We're speaking to that, mm -hmm. to the, maybe the pacing and, and the locations and just the sheer number of, of enemies, the onslaught. Yeah. So yeah. we're uh, rebalanced. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're working hard to lower some of the spawn counts and get, create a little more breathing in the exploration room. And we're also working on a new concept called remnants, which are uh, small, explorable, um, you know, more like the abandoned houses that, 
you know, you can go in and hide in for a night or just explore and find a little bit of loot so that people get more of that, more of that open. A little open fixer floor. upper house so you can kind of, yeah. if you want to stay there, yeah. you can kind of invest into it. And yeah. kind of so not, yeah. not every POI will have to be this big long quest that you go and run yeah. on. I'm really excited about yeah. that one. We, uh, you know, the remnants are kind of in response to the community's desire to have more exploration that I'm really happy to hear this. It's, I love the new PIs that they really spend a lot of time just making them feel sort of like this organized quest or dungeon that you're diving into, which is fine when you're looking for it. The problem is you go into a city and it's like, oh, all right, here's 50, 50 houses and all of them are dungeons, all our missions that each take two hours to explore. And you're like, I just want to go in, I want to find my pot in the house. I don't want, don't want to have to go in through, you know, go through all this all this dungeon crawling kind of thing and eating these 50 zombies that are inside one, you know, the, the one bedroom apartment. And I think this is really what they're trying to tone down. One, I heard they were on the forums that they were bringing down the spawns by about with three quarters of what it was before, maybe at uh, two thirds or something. So they bring it down fairly significantly. I still think maybe they might uh, want to bring it down a little bit more. Again, we'll see. And adding on more of these normal houses out there so that you don't run into it. Because it's a little bit weird right now where you have it. All the POIs, or most of them, are really this really elaborate POIs that you, I find myself at least, I can't appreciate the beauty of them as a POI because I know there's going to be you know 30 zombies in there, which means you're going to be on edge the whole time. And by the time you finish it, it's like, oh, right, now, now it's like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and I have to get back to my base. I just want to be able to sort of take my time and look through them without having that intense, immense danger always sort of looking over your shoulder and ready to just spring on you, especially, you know, <laughs> falling through the floor or they're falling through the, because uh, they're stuck in the ceiling or breaking out from the closet. So it doesn't give you that opportunity to just take a little bit slow pace and enjoy, just enjoy the game, enjoy the exploration. I think it's good that they're really, really taking this on board and trying to address it. Overhaul, a really nice overhaul, massive overhaul, artistic overhaul of Random gen in the, the natural terrain. Um, you've done that work. Yeah, that, that was the biggest. Very close on the cars. On developing our own stamping system so that we could, you know, make better looking random worlds that are so more artist driven. We're generating data from height maps now rather than, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of images assembled in a procedural way, right? Right. Yes. So, it's from simple. my experience, that has given us the most realistic looking um, random gen terrain we've seen yet. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just looks gorgeous. You get much better detail out of you know, mesas and, and things and like that. And more natural looking versus using algorithms to make mountains. We're using mm -hmm. kind of images, so you get a more predictable result. Right. Always love when they work on the random world generation, making it look better. And the actual people were commenting on that after the previous Alpha 18 video that they had that it actually looked better. It seemed like it was smoother, it was more naturally, it wasn't as flat as Alpha 17.4 at least was, which of course they seem to have done for, in order to handle the roads and everything. So having a natural world is important. Having a good random world generated is also very important for sort of the long-term play play enjoyment. And I hope they bring back that kind of north is the snow biome, south is the desert, and of course other things in between rather than this splotchy patchwork quilt of different biomes that we have right now, unfortunately, in Alpha 17.4. I hope they bring back that sort of north-south. Uh, and, and I hope they bring in some water. We have no water in Alpha 17.4, except small ponds and maybe a small stream here and there. But otherwise, it's so so empty of water. I hope they manage to bring that back. Maybe not these huge oceans, but at least have some fairly large lakes and uh, whether it's on the edge of the map or in between, uh, it doesn't matter, but at least have some larger bodies of water because that's something that was pretty nice in previous versions. You had to sort of work around them, walk around them, and now it's like this, just not that there. So is there a is there a feature that stands out in your mind that most excites you, either from a development or a player standpoint, about the 18? Joel stole it. It is the random stats. It's one of my most All right. Don't forget yeah. the penetrator perk. Oh yeah, the penetration and the grazing blow. Those are both very cool too. So the penetrator allows you to shoot through multiple zombies yep. with a single shot. 
And uh, so you line their heads up and, and bodies, whatever parts, you just line them up and position it, pop them, and a bullet will go through several wow. zombies depending on what your perk level is. So you could get maybe up to five kills with one single shot. Totally cool. Robert, they love your shirt. It's a great oh, yeah, oh, shirt. I can make this. Oh, there's a lot of birds. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, I mean, they did the grazing or grazing blow. Grazing blow. So that, just, we all know what that is. Why don't you describe to folks what, what well, so they can understand what that does for them? Player, there's a lot of grabbing, and even for myself, on you have to have the crosshair directly over the spot you want to hit, right when they're there. Otherwise, you completely miss. And I mean, that's frustrating. It's not fun, and it's not real great for melee players. So I wanted to give them a little more wiggle room. So now we take the arc of you know your swing, and we take the animation, and we actually watch where it's going, you know, through the swing. And you can hit everything along that. Now, if you keep the crosshair on something, it's going to do the most damage there. But you still get a percentage of damage on anything that's hit along that path. So you can hit them in the in the shoulder and the, and the chest, and mm -hmm. so with an arm as it crosses across. It takes whatever's hit first. Mm -hmm. It'll ignore the grazing blow if they're dead center. Okay. So that you'll get that you know big damage. But you know if you only just barely nick their shoulder and you miss their head, they're still taking a little damage. That's nice. You can, uh... So they cover here two, I think, really interesting features. I think the second one is the best one, the grazing glow. I think the penetration thing, uh, they've been talking about that on the forums of how they're going to do that. I think at one point they were doing it based on perks and then they were doing it as you know, ammunition. I'm not really sure where they landed, but I think it's nice. I mean, it, it does allow you to, and I think they were putting it on the marksman rifle. So it's not on a simple pistol, I think, which is sort of what, Joel seemed to be sort of uh, showing with his hands, and he was mentioning that it's only for marksman rifle or hunting rifles that allow you to do this penetration where you can hit multiple zombies, which I think is pretty cool if you have the perks or the ammo to uh, damage multiple, which is really nice if you're having a kill corridor, because you can imagine standing there at the, at the back and you're shooting through multiple zombies and doing massive damage as a result. That'll be nice. The second part of the grazing load, it's a uh, so I think they're really trying to address the problem of Alpha 17. If you look at previous versions, Alpha 16 or earlier, uh, clubs, I believe the way they were doing it, they had this um, sphere of, uh, of, of interaction where you were aiming up at the crosshair. So it has had a sort of larger sphere with the club. So it was more forgiving when you're hitting it. As long as the enemy was within that sphere, even if the crosshair was off, it was still registered as a hit. Machete had a much smaller sphere, which means it required more finesse, uh, more accuracy from the player, not from the character in the game. But in Alpha 17, everything seemed to require pinpoint accuracy. You saw that sometimes where I know when I've been having uh, multiple zombies coming towards me, I swing, the zombie in front of me uh, shifts a little bit. So you're now right above the shoulder and there might be another zombie behind there and he's taking the full damage. So the zombie behind the one in front of you is getting damaged and maybe getting killed. But the zombie right in front of you is just fine, even though it literally wouldn't have been in a way to get through to the second zombie uh, with your melee weapon. And I think this is really what they're trying to address. Now, that's going to be an interesting thing. Let's say you're having the crosshair over another zombie behind and you're still literally hitting through the other zombie. He's going to register a racing blow on the first one and a damage on the second or just damage on the second. We'll see, but at least they're, they're addressing a problem that is there that is a very big one for melee players because especially with a little bit of lag, especially if you're playing on, on multiplayer on servers, you'll notice that melee is so unpredictable. Basically, melee and there's more than one enemy that goes together. Right. Uh, um, like the sledgehammer, you can swing that in a big arc and you can hit your thump, 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 because it's hitting four or five zombies surrounding you. So cool. And it feels way more visible and, you know, just feels better as far as melee like goes. Nice. Yeah. But I guess explain that if you do have the grazing on multiple zombies, it will hit multiple, and that's really nice. Again, looking at the weapon arc, and people are saying that from other games, be it Vermintide or other melee center kind of FPS games where that's often what happens that they are looking at the arc as opposed to where the crosshair is at the end and I think it makes it more forgiving for the player but also more logical that if you're swinging through 
zombie and the crosshair happens to be slightly off, it still should do damage. I mean, it's not like it just goes through the zombie without any damage. I think we're going to go to a section where we uh, want to stand by again. Yeah. Give us a just a moment, everybody. Uh, you'll be, if you have questions, start preparing them. We're... Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.